Guys, this is getting ridiculous. It really is. We haven't even got our hands on the M1 Ultra chips that are shipping in the Mac Studio in a week. But already, we've got rumors and news coming out about M2, the next generation of Apple Silicon chips. And with the news that we've seen in, in the last couple of days, something sparked in my head and I figured out everything, the entire lineup. So today I'm gonna tell you about it. Here is the entire M2 lineup explained. Okay, so first of all, obviously this is just like uh, ridiculous, right? We haven't even got the M1 Ultra yet, although I'm unbelievably excited to get my hands on that. It's gonna be shipping in a week. I've got two Mac Studios on the way, so get subscribed, leave a like, you're gonna wanna stay tuned for that coverage. But specifically, I wanna talk about some info that 9to5Mac reported on yesterday. So this was mainly concerning a new updated version of the Mac Mini, which could have versions of the M2 and M2 Pro chip. And before we even get into talking about the M2 and the M2 Pro chip, I'm really happy to hear that 9to5 is reporting that there would actually be an M2 Pro version of the Mac Mini. I tweeted that a couple of days ago. Wouldn't it be great if Apple offered an even more mid-range desktop? Right now we've got like a $700 Mac Mini and then the $2,000 Mac Studio. Wouldn't it be great if there was like a $1,300 M1 or M2 Pro Mac Mini right in the middle there. Uh, and so it looks like Apple might actually be working on that. But the, the real topic for this video is the M2 and the M2 Pro itself. The J473 Mac Mini will be powered by the M2 chip. So apparently this is very similar to the M1. It's based on the A15 and it has an eight core CPU, but this time it has a more powerful 10 core GPU. Now we've actually been hearing about that for quite some time. Mark Gurman leaked that like a year ago. So we've known, or at least we've been told about this new 10 core GPU. And I think that's gonna be a really big help on the low end because the M1, obviously the CPU is ridiculous given how much power it consumes and the price point that it is. But the GPU could stand to be a little bit better and looks like Apple agrees with us. But what really interested me from this article was the discussion about the M2 Pro. And it's that realization paired with the M2 that allows us to figure out the entire M2 lineup. Apple has been working with another Mac Mini that features the M2 Pro chip with eight performance and four efficiency cores, totaling a 12 core CPU. Now that's a very interesting point to make, going from the 10 core M1 Pro and M1 Max to a 12 core model, but actually increasing the efficiency instead of the performance cores. I would have thought potentially having that the other way around with 10 performance and two efficiency. So we'll have to see what happens there, but a 12 core CPU, that's what is being rumored. And I find that really interesting because I reported like a while ago um, on a rumor by Dylan DKT who said that there was a 12 core chip coming for the iMac. Maybe this is what he was talking about. A new M2 chip with a 10 core GPU and an M2 Pro chip with a 12 core CPU, those pieces of information allow us to completely break down the M2 lineup. So. The first thing that you have to understand about Apple Silicon, specifically that 10 core GPU thing, is the way that Apple has implemented their scaling. Right now, there's the M1, which has eight GPU cores, and then the M1 Pro with 16, the M1 Max with 32, and then on the high end, we have the M1 Ultra with up to 64. Now, there are some binned versions of that, so you can get 14 cores in the M1 Pro, you can then get 24 in the M1 Max, 48 in the M1 Ultra, but the thing that's really interesting about that is if you look at the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra, they're all multiples of eight. Why is that? Well, the way Apple breaks down their GPUs is into these clusters, which are essentially clusters of M1 GPUs. They're bundles of eight. You can actually see this if you have 
one of the new MacBook Pros. If you open up TG Pro, you can see the GPU being broken down by chunks. If you have an M1 Max, you will see four clusters of eight and it reports temperatures on those individually. And even if you have the 24 core GPU version, it will still show up four of those chunks, just one of them is disabled. So what does that tell us about M2? Well, if we know that the M2 chip is going to have a 10 core GPU, or in fact, a nine core for the binned version, like you have the seven core MacBook Air, well, that tells us everything that we need to know. First of all, if you multiply that by two, that gives you an 18 or 20 core GPU, that would be the binned version of the M1 Pro and the full M1 Pro. Right now, 14 and 16, next year, 18 and 20. But then that also gives us M1 Max because the 10 core GPU times four would be a 40 core or 32 with one of those clusters disabled. And then we can do the same thing for the M1 Ultra. It would either be 80 cores, <laughs> which is just ridiculous, or you would disable two of those clusters and be at 60. And then if we combine that information with what 9to5 is reporting, a 12 core CPU, that would pretty easily give us the M1 Ultra's 24 core CPU. That's just ridiculous, it's just unfair. So yeah, if you, <laughs> if you looked at the M1 Ultra and you said 20 CPU cores, 64 GPU cores, that's not really enough for me. Well, I guess eventually in maybe another year and a half or two years maybe, I don't know, we could have an 80 core GPU with a 24 core CPU. And I mean, that's just crazy. Now I will say, when we are talking about this down the road M2 Ultra, if it would have a 24 core CPU, it, it's a little weird, because if you take Mac Rumors reporting, then it would actually have the same number of performance cores as right now. So with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, those additional four cores are all efficiency cores. And frankly, I don't really see the need for that in either the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max or the Mac Studio, especially the Mac Studio. I mean, that thing is already sucking down some power, so why not give it more performance cores? That's gonna be a more noticeable bump. It does strike me as weird that you would have an M2 Ultra with 16 performance and eight efficiency cores. It's a lot of efficiency cores, and it gets even weirder when we talk about the Mac Pro. So Mark Gurman has long been rumoring a 40 core Apple Silicon chip. Well, if M2 Pro uh, and M2 Ultra were to be doubled yet again, that would give us a 48 core CPU <laughs> and a 160 core GPU, which it just sounds made up, honestly. That's like absurd. But that would give you 16 efficiency cores in this super powerful 600 watt Apple Silicon Mac Pro. And I mean, why? why? Why would you need that? So, I don't know, it's weird. We had all kind of assumed if you rewind to before we learned about this 10 core Apple Silicon chip, we all sort of assumed that it would be 12 core. Four efficiency, eight high performance. But then Apple kind of surprised us a little bit by changing it. Rather than having four efficiency cores like in the M1, they cut it back to two. And in hindsight, that makes a lot of sense, especially when you start scaling that with M1 Ultra, because now we only have four efficiency cores, perfectly reasonable on a desktop with continuous power. And it even made sense on the MacBook Pro, where the two efficiency cores have been more than enough for getting really solid battery out of the M1 Max chips. Apple Silicon is exciting, folks. See, I'm really glad that we have this news because I was a little nervous about this next generation. But uh, we've been hearing that M2 is based on the A15 chip. So that would mean probably, I don't know, 10 or 15% performance gains in the actual cores themselves. So even with the M2 keeping it with the same core layout, we should expect that to be 10 or 15% faster than the already very solid M1 chip. Um, and then carrying that over to the M2 Pro, not exactly sure how those gains would translate because obviously the eight 
high performance cores would be about 10 to 15% faster, but adding an additional two efficiency cores, I don't know, does that give you another 5% overall? We'd, we'd have to wait and see. Um, I mean, I, I've been very critical of Apple because I don't like to just give them a free pass because they're working on something new and exciting. I'm like, you know, you guys have to keep up with what Intel and AMD have to offer. And it seems like they are hopefully gonna do that, which is good to hear. But at the same time, that doesn't make the current M1 Pro like old or slow just because there's a new one that could be coming in a year or so. So yeah, take all of this information for what it's worth, which is probably accurate, but not necessarily, you know, gonna impact your purchase of a MacBook Pro, which isn't even widely available yet because the shipping times are super delayed thanks to the chip shortage. But I am curious to know what you guys think of all of this. Do you think M2 Pro will have four efficiency cores or will they do 10 performance and two efficiency? Let me know what you think down below. Let me know what you think about an 80 core Apple Silicon GPU, which sounds ludicrous. And um, with that, I will see you guys in the next video.